staggering toll on the highways, Evesham Township's winding up a 30-day pilot program providing shuttles and sober SAM services to chauffeur the overserved home free. Well, it's worked so well, it's been kicked up a notch. Michael Hill reports. Evesham Township has become the first in the nation to offer tipsy restaurant patrons a free Uber ride home. In order to save a life, at times, you've got to take measures of which not, are not what you expected. The mayor says drunk driving spiked here in 2013, and the town chose Uber over taxi cabs because it already has the technology in place. Studies have shown alcohol-related driving incidents decrease when towns have ride-sharing services. We are always looking for ways to use our technology to better serve the communities in which we operate, and this is a prime example of how we can help join forces to combat drinking and driving. The partnership covers rides from 19 participating Evesham bars and restaurants. If town residents have had too much to drink between 9 at night and 2 in the morning till January 2nd, someone can pull up the Uber app, select the Evesham safe ride option, and request the free ride home. The interest here is to have a safe environment and have your patrons have a good time at the same time. And what I found out to be speaking with our patrons, there, there was always a fear of driving home drunk and they didn't realize that there was an option. They're like, what am I going to do? Well, take a cab. Well, sometimes a cab takes 40 minutes to get there. The town also has partnered with Be My Designated Driver for another free service. If you are out somewhere, you realize I shouldn't be driving home, you call us and we take you and your, and your car home. Donations from local businesses, such as the mayor's brother, underwrite the free rides. The $2,500 will, will send several hundred people home. The mayor and the police chief say statistics from the pilot program show that there are an app and an appetite for the Saving Lives program. 350 free rides in September and eight arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol. Evesham had a deadly drunk driving crash in 2009. Chief Christopher Chu was lieutenant then and shift commander responding to the crash. It's something you'll never forget. Uh, our officers will never forget it and the community still hasn't recovered from that incident. So I know when I became chief, it was num my number one priority is to make sure we protect the innocent people out there like Sean English. Restaurant patrons seem to welcome the town arranging safe rides. And I think that is a wonderful idea, a life-saving idea. Evesham Township arranging designated drivers, protecting the public from those who've been served too much to drink and drive. Michael Hill, NJTV News. For NJTV News question today, how effective do you think partnerships like this will be in helping to reduce drunk driving? Share your thoughts with us on our Facebook page or tweet us. I think it's really, really good, especially for, you know, parents worrying about their children. It's going to give people more incentive to drink alcohol because they know that they're going to get a free ride. You know, it'll be safer on the streets for people not driving drunk. I think that's a good idea. It's going to help save lives and uh, stop accidents from happening and all that good stuff. I think it'll take some of the questioning out of how that young adult might get home if they don't have, let's say, um, money for a cab or if they're out with a lot of friends. Support for the Medical Report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Forty years ago, breast cancer was a death sentence, seldom mentioned, never in polite company. Thirty years ago, October became Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The walks and rallies and pink ribbons raised funds for research into the cause and cures. And today, with screening tests and targeted therapies, breast cancer has morphed from a death sentence to a disease that's manageable, treatable, and survivable. Lauren Monka reports. You go through so many emotions at the same time. It's shock, it's denial, it's, it's like a grieving process. At 38 years old, Colts Neck resident Jennifer Lakoiak found a lump in her breast. It was an aggressive, fast-growing, cancerous tumor. The mother of two had no family history. Soon after being diagnosed with breast cancer, the fashion executive went into what she calls warrior mode, armed for what was to come, a lumpectomy, chemo, radiation, and medication. 
when you finally look in the mirror and you don't have any hair and you don't have any eyelashes and you don't have any eyebrows, you are looking at a cancer patient. You have arrived. Determined to help other young women battling the disease, the New Jersey native wrote a book, Does This Outfit Make Me Look Bald?, and began blogging about life with breast cancer. The New Jersey Department of Health indicates there were 7,070 cases of invasive female breast cancer newly diagnosed in 2012, and 1,312 residents died from the disease in the same year. The positive aspect, though, is since uh, the late 90s, we have seen an increase in overall survival in breast cancer. Meridian Cancer Care's Dr. Kenneth Nahum says that's due to early detection, preventative medications in high-risk groups, and better treatment for early and stage 4 breast cancer. We're going through a basically a renaissance in oncology with newer drugs, better methods of treatment, both with radiation, surgery, and uh, medicines. Patients are doing better. Patients are living longer. Dr. Nahum says one of his patients has been living with stage 4 breast cancer for the past 20 years. People always ask me, when are we going to cure cancer? Well, what we've seen that over through the years with converting cancer into a chronic illness in all forms of cancer, but especially with breast cancer. Dr. Nahum says some risk factors include family history, certain genes like BRCA1 and 2, increased alcohol consumption, poor diet, lack of exercise, obesity, and breast abnormalities. Five years after Jennifer's initial diagnosis, she got yet another unwanted call. Her doctors found a different cancer in her breast. What was it like to have to go through all that a second time around? It was like a kick in the teeth. She had a double mastectomy, followed by chemo and medication, which caused severe side effects. That's when Dr. Nahum suggested a plant-based diet. There's been a number of studies that have been suggested that patients, if they eat more fruits and vegetables, that vegans may have a lower incidence of developing breast cancer as well as developing a recurrence of breast cancer if they've already been diagnosed. After changing to a mostly plant-based diet, Jennifer says she felt her symptoms disappear in days. Food truly is nourishment. It's what what is this doing to my body? How is this going to make me feel? And that, you know, that really makes you feel much more in control of how you live your life. It's been three years since her second battle with cancer. Jennifer is still on medication and is now in remission. In Colts Neck, I'm Lauren Wonko, NJTV News.